Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to learn about a herb called motherwort. So welcome to my medicine garden. It has gone absolutely wild this year and I just, I can't keep on top of it. So I'm gonna let nature do her thing and maybe try to tackle it a little bit more next year. But behind me, you can see motherwort, uh, botanical name Leonurus cardiaca. So in Ontario, we tend to harvest it. Again, I'm in a zone four approximately sometimes some people will say we're a 5a but i think we behave more like a four and she tends to flower mid to late june which means this is the perfect time for me to be harvesting motherwort to make tincture so for harvesting i'm going to want to take the top 30 to 40 percent of the plant and that's the part that i utilize some people like to wear gloves and when i turn the camera around and talk a bit about her medicinal properties how to identify her and show her to you, you'll see she can be um, a little prickly <laughs> in the flowers. So that is motherwort. And let's find out why you would want to use motherwort for medicine. So one of the main identifying features of motherwort, you can see here is this square stalk. So you're gonna pay attention to that. Also notice that the leaves are opposite each other and definitely um, toothed lobed type leaves. If you take a really close look at the flowers, you can see, do you see how they look almost like thorny? That's why sometimes uh, people will wear gloves and when she goes to seed, her seeds will almost stick to you like burrs. So I'm gonna do my best to completely summarize motherwort because she has so many amazing medicinal properties. I do believe I have a full monograph of motherwort available on my website. So if I'm correct about that, I will link that in the description below. So of course, motherwort, as its name implies, is uh, very useful for the female reproductive system. It's a uterine antispasmodic. It's an analgesic, so it's gonna help with pain. It is an amenagogue, which means it helps um, balance, tone and balance the hormones of the female reproductive system. It is also a uterine, a relaxing and tonifying uterine. So when I speak of uterines, that means it works directly on the muscle, whereas a menagogue refers to its um, effect on the hormones of the female reproductive system. So this makes it amazing for anything to do with the female reproductive system. Um, under the care of a qualified herbalist, they even use it a couple weeks before delivery. Great for things like PMS, menopause, um, all types of issues with the female reproductive system like amenorrhea, menorrhagia, those types of things. As its Latin name or botanical name indicates, Leonurus cardiaca, it is also an amazing herb for the heart. So this is um, a cardiac, meaning it's going to work on the muscle, the direct muscle of the female, or of the, uh, sorry, of the cardiovascular system. It is also a really, really great hypotensive, so it's gonna help to balance the blood pressure. And it's a relaxant and tranquilizer. That tends to fall more under nervous system, but because of that, it's going to help to calm people who tend to get anxious and then their blood pressure increases. It's also a vascular tonic, helping to tone the blood vessels. So it's gonna be great for things like spider veins, varicose veins, any arterial sclerosis, those types of cardiac conditions. As I hinted, it's also an amazing nervine. So I love using this in formulas with women who have female reproductive disturbances, but are also dealing with anxiety, depression, stress, and those types of conditions. My teacher, my former teacher, Michael Vertoli, coined a term neurovasodilator. And that term indicates that a herb is particularly good at increasing blood flow to the brain. So in addition to things like anxiety and depression, stress, tension, we're dealing with poor concentration, brain fog, um, those types of issues as well. She's also very bitter, so I like to use her as the bitter component in formulations. There is a little bit of 
um, you know, immune properties for motherwort as well because she's decent at modulating fevers and she's a pretty good expectorant. As you can see, it's really difficult for me to cover all of the amazing healing aspects of motherwort in just one video. So just with all, like all botanical medicines, we have to be aware if there's any toxicity or contraindications when we're working with a plant. Uh, so in the terms, in the case of Leonuris uh, or motherwort, there's not really any toxicity, but there are some times where it's not appropriate to use. So one example would be during most of pregnancy. If I'm treating a client throughout their entire pregnancy, I may add motherwort to the last formula prior to delivery. So say like the last two weeks to help tone and prepare the uterus for delivery. Um, and as I have mentioned, <laughs> something just landed on me there's so many bugs this year um, as i have mentioned in previous videos uh, any plants that do the same thing as a medication you're on we always want to proceed with caution um, and i'm driving this point home every single video because it really is important so in this case because leonuris cardiaca has um, effects on the cardiovascular system and on the nervous system we have to be really aware if we are on medications that do the same thing so one example i really like to give people would be in the case of high blood pressure if you're on a medication to lower your blood pressure and you start tinkering around with plants that are also hypotensive, you could reduce your blood pressure too much, causing you to feel faint, dizzy, um, you know, you, you may lose your balance when you stand up too quickly, and you could even pass out potentially if you really don't know what you're doing and drop your blood pressure too much. So it is wise to be aware of the interactions that plants can have with your medications and always proceed with caution and work with a qualified herbalist if you can. So I would be remiss, I just checked my notes really quick, and of course it does also have uh, effects on the nervous system. So if you're on anti-anxiety, antidepressant medications, be aware. Also because of its affinity for the female reproductive system, if you're on oral contraceptives, proceed with caution. So just wanted to make sure I covered all of those aspects as well. So I'm back inside with my giant bowl of motherwort. I harvested enough to be able to make about a liter of tincture, so I'll do two 500 milliliter bottles and that'll work well for me in clinic. When I make tincture, I like to do it in 500 milliliter size because the shelf life of tinctures is really, really long when you keep the herbs in them, so upwards of decades for many plants. Once you press them though, they've been exposed to oxygen, you're opening and closing them all the time. I like to use them up within a year. So for me, the 500 milliliter size suits my purposes well. If you run a much busier clinic, you, you, know, you may want to use one liter bottles. It's really up to you. But one of the reasons why I wanted to film this little segment to add in was to talk about the folklore and magical uses of motherwort because I love the stories and when I was outside, I forgot about them. So the first documented use of motherwort can be dated back to the ancient Greeks. And in fact, the name Leonurus cardiaca is Greek. Leonurus meaning lion's tail and cardiaca, of course, referring to the cardiovascular system. But if you check out the shape of motherwort's leaf, <laughs> it certainly does look like, you know, if I were to draw the end of a lion's tail, that's, that's what it would look like. And so it was often used by the ancient Greeks to treat um, anxiety in pregnant women. Uh, there's also sources that say it was used to treat hysteria. We don't really refer to that anymore um, or that term anymore. But as you can see, again, it has that affinity for the nervous system and for uh, the female reproductive system. So that pairs very, very nicely. There's also an old legend about a town's uh, creek that ran through a patch of motherwort. Now, I can't say whether this is true or not, but it's stated in multiple sources that motherwort became known as the plant of longevity because this town whose water supply ran through this large patch of motherwort, everyone in the town lived to be over 100 years old, which is kind of amazing if you think about it. So often in terms of folkloric uh, uses, it was used again for women in pregnancy and uh, for longevity. In terms of magical uses, some of like, the more well-known ones would be uh, burning it as an incense to aid in astral projection. So if you are working in realms like that, um, trying to work in maybe your dream state or entering altered states when you meditate, 
especially combining it with mugwort makes a, a really nice combination. There are some sources to state smoking it, but I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend that. It does have some action on the lungs and there are some sources to say that that's not safe. So if we burn it as an incense, that's much better. It's also was used as um, a wash and a talisman um, to help protect pregnant women and their unborn babies. So it was a protective herb in that sense as well. So I just wanted to share those little tidbits with you all. So thank you so very much for joining me in my crazy wild medicine garden. If you have any questions or comments about motherboard Leonaris cardiaca, please leave them below. As I said, I'm almost certain I've got a full monograph on my website. So if that's something that's interests you, check out the link in the description below. And on behalf of motherboard, I wish you health and wellness, and I will see you on the next video.